Hey guys, well the Ryzen build is done, it's here, it's just off camera. So I've had it for about a week now. Um, so I've been using it for a week and I've been benchmarking it. So was it actually worth buying? Let's take a look. Hey guys, and before we get into the benchmarks, there's just a few things I'd want to say. Uh, so during my sort of week now of using the Ryzen build, um, there's a few things I've noticed about it and there's a few things that I did during my benchmarking. So I just want you to be aware of that. So um, there is no stock benchmarking in this at all today. Um, everything is overclocked because I run all my machines overclocked. Um, the Ryzen machine is running at 3.9 GHz stable and the memory is running at DDR4-3000 stable. The X99 rig with the 6800K I've actually downclocked to 4.4 GHz from 4.5 because I felt 4.4 is probably the most realistic upper overclock that most people are going to get. 4.5 for me was very lucky, I got a good chip. Um, and the memory in there is also running at um, DDR4-3000. So that's that out of the way. The second thing to say is that overclocking my GTX 1070 on Ryzen was also quite problematic. Um, I swapped the card into the machine and I just plugged in the same overclock that I was running on the X99 rig and got no joy. It just would not. Um, you know, it would just crash out, it would load things um, like Heaven or 3D Mark, Fire Strike, and then it would just crash out, basically. So, on the X99 rig, it's running at plus 194 megahertz on this GPU clock, it has no overclock on the memory, um, and on the Ryzen rig, it's only running at plus 100 megahertz on the GPU clock, which still gets it to... Um, just under 2.1 gigahertz um, taking into account GPU boost and again no overclock on the memory for the graphics card on the Ryzen machine. So guys without further ado let's take a look at those benchmarks and then we'll have a little bit of a chat about them. So guys, there you have it. As you can see, I haven't done any thermal benchmarks in this. I haven't had time. Um, it was quite synthetic heavy because I was more interested in the multi-core performance of this. So let's talk about synthetics first. So nothing there I'm surprised about. Ryzen generally lagging behind between 15 and sort of 7%. Very, very close in things like Cinebench R15, the, the multi-core score. Um, less than a percent between them which is quite impressive considering this machine is clocked well the x99 machine is clocked 500 megahertz faster than the ryzen machine and um, some real odd ones like the cpu z benchmark interesting results um and then moving on to the games um i have no idea what happened in rise of the tomb raider um i ran that benchmark over and over again i mean in general as you know i run my benchmarks three times and take an average 
um, but the rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark I, I ran literally 10 times and kept getting the same result. I do not think that score is realistic. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's unoptimized for Ryzen or what's happening, but uh, there is no way when you look at the other benchmarks and the game performance that that's indicative of how Ryzen performs versus the 6800K or an Intel platform. Um, it's just impossible. Um, so moving aside from that, um, in general, the gaming performance I was really impressed with, especially in Ghost Recon, which is notoriously unoptimized on any platform. The fact that it's within, um, I think it was within 5 FPS in terms of average FPS of the Intel rig, uh, amazing, uh, amazing, really, really happy with that. Um, and then moving on to the, the benchmarks that I'm more interested in because they're more representative of what I do. So the... Um, the Premiere Pro um, encoding, that was just 1080p file, um, 1080p file, um, it's just, just over seven minutes long. Um, so yeah, really impressed that Ryzen encoded that and the time it did a little bit more than a minute slower than my X99 rig. Very, very impressive there. Again, considering that it's clocked 500 megahertz slower than the Intel rig. And then looking at Handbrake, um, I do use Handbrake quite a lot, usually for re uh, well for transcoding like this, so um, transcoding from H.264 to H.265. So that's all I was doing in this test. And the Ryzen machine did it significantly faster um, than the Intel machine. I think the Intel machine did it in around two minutes, 10 seconds, and the Ryzen machine was just over one and a half minutes. So impressive performance from the Ryzen rig. Um, so what does that all mean in the end? I mean, it, in the end, um, I have to say, I, I would be lying if I said the, R, the R5-1600 overclocked is faster than my i7-6800K overclocked. I know they're not at the same price point, but they are six cores, 12 threads, and that's the way I looked at this. I, I wanted to see if I wanted to build a budget editing rig, would it be worth going with this R5-1600? So. Yes, the R5-1600 is slower, as I've said, than the i7-6800K. However, it is not that much slower. On average, I would say you're looking at between, depending on the task, it's gonna be between the seven, anything up to sort of 15%. If you take away things like Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I consider an outlier, um, I don't think that's representative of its performance at all, but when you look at the cost, so when I set up my X99 rig, when I bought that motherboard and I bought the CPU, and fair enough, there's 32 gigs of RAM in that machine rather than the 16 that's in the Ryzen machine. Um, that cost me the best part of 900 pounds just for the base components, so being CPU, RAM, and motherboard. Now, when I got the base components for my Ryzen machine, so when I got the motherboard, the RAM, and the CPU, it was just a shade over 400 pounds. So you're getting almost the same performance for half the cost. That's amazing. And remember, the Ryzen CPU comes with a pretty decent um, heatsink. You could overclock with that heatsink. You might not be able to hit 3.9, but you'd be getting up to around 3.7, I would imagine. On the X99 platform, it doesn't come with a, a heatsink solution. So that's another cost you have to factor into that platform. Um, so all in all, um, if you're looking to build a budget editing slash gaming do it all rig, I would say, um, I, again, I, I, I would be lying if I said um, buy an Intel machine at the moment. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly would say and would recommend you going out and buying a decent B350 motherboard because it keeps the cost of the motherboard down. Although there are some cheap X370 ones out there. Um, I think 16 gigs of RAM is a must if you want to get into things like editing and, and get the fastest RAM you can. And get an R5 1600. I, you could pay the extra $30, 30 pounds and get the 1600X. Um, but I've got 1600X light performance for less money. So I've got all my cores clocked at 3.9 rather than whatever it is, one or two of them boosting up to four gigahertz. So um, a big thumbs up from me for the Ryzen 5. It's a 
great bundle. It's a great machine. It's a great budget solution for somebody who wants to do a bit of editing, a bit of gaming, like I say, a bit of everything. Um, and then just how I found using the Ryzen rig since I've moved to it. Um, first few days were problematic, I'm not going to lie. There, there were things to sort out, there were oddities. Um, getting the memory overclock stable was a pain in the ass, but got that done. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I'm gonna be using this machine as my main machine for the next few weeks. Um, so I'm gonna be editing on it, gaming on it, etc., etc., just to see how I get on with it. I don't, you know, I'm not gonna, this is not the video to end my experience with Ryzen. Um, all in all, very impressed with what AMD have done considering this is a first generation product completely built up from the ground CPU architecture and for it to be this good at launch is incredible. I don't think we should take that away from AMD. It basically brings back choice to the consumer which is a great thing. Well guys that's it, that's my views on Ryzen so far and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a dislike. Don't forget to comment. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to consider subscribing. And I'll catch you again in another great tech video. Bye.